<laughs> Allow me to get my composure. <laughs> <laughs> all right hit me with it producer pots okay does size matter what's the deal with microgreens can we please talk about it <laughs> the surprising thing is that most of the claims of microgreens having like way more concentrated nutrients and being like these nutrient powerhouse, right? You see online, like people saying that you get the same amount of nutrition in the tiny little microgreen as you get in the whole leaf. That right. not actually backed up by the data, but also there isn't that much data. So there's really surprisingly few studies that measure the amount of nutrients in the like sprout of kale, the like baby kale versus the big leaf of kale. But there certainly are some that are, are like in the big leaf, that big leaf is photosynthesizing. It's making energy for the whole plant. So all of the nutrients that are required for that leaf to like make energy and keep the entire plant alive, you're getting that in the mature leaf, whereas you're not actually getting that in the sprout. And then there's some phytonutrients like sulforaphane, which is a, a type of glucosinolate found in some members of the cabbage family that's pretty high in broccoli. It's even higher in broccoli sprouts. So there's probably a few things that are higher in sprouts and microgreens, but most of the valuable nutrition you're getting just as much, if not more, in the mature green. Typically, the mature green is considered a more sustainable food. So you're, you're you know, harvesting a couple of leaves and the whole, the whole plant is staying alive uh, compared to you're growing all of these seeds on a tray and then you like just harvest all of the microgreens. So typically, uh, you're getting a more like sustainably produced product from the mature leaf and you're getting more nutrition but based on the data that we have it's not it's not like a it's not such a huge difference that i would say like oh no you should just eat like just eat the whole kale leaf don't eat baby kale or kale sprouts it's very much if you if you like one and you don't like the other then that's fine so a lot of people like sprouts they're a little bit crisp crispier they have, you know, they, they're just the, the textural experience is a little bit different. They can have a more mild flavor, especially compared to like in the cruciferous vegetable family, like especially compared to the more bitter, mature greens. So if you like, if you like the sprouts, they're great. It's just, I, I think the claim saying that they're so much better than the, the, the grown up leaves, I, that's not at all where the data's at right now. That being said, there's there's so there's like more holes in the data than there is data to actually say, you know, one is one is better than the other. So I would say the the take home message is uh, eat what you like, have access to, and can afford. So sometimes baby greens uh, taste way better, or they fit a recipe better. Um, they are, a lot of them are easy to grow at home. So that might make them a more affordable. Might be better option. for like people in apartment buildings, right? Yeah. So. Like, um, and you can get whole kits to grow them. Um, a lot of them will just grow in a, in a glass jar though with, um, if you can uh, either put like cheesecloth over the end, they need some air circulation. Um, so a lot of them you can just grow in a glass jar in a windowsill. Um, at first they don't need any light at all. It just depends on like how, how much you want to grow them out. And do you want to get all the way to the first little tiny real leaves, or do you just want to sprout them? So they're pretty easy to grow. Um, growing them is, is typically pretty affordable. I grow broccoli sprouts and I'm on the same bag of broccoli seeds. Uh, it's been about three years. Uh, and I think I spent $8 on the bag and I've probably <laughs> used like a 20th of it. So that's like a they, great deal. Yeah. It's, I mean, you get, you get a lot for, for growing it yourself for the, for the effort. Um, but, uh, 
there's not there's not a good nutritional reason to opt for sprouts over the 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 grown up. I almost <laughs> said big I almost said big boy vegetable and then I remembered how you framed the question and um and I re I reject I reject that language. Uh let's uh, the grown up, the grown up version. The grown up, the, the grown, grown up version of the vegetable. Oh, Nutritionally, the vegetable. there's not a good reason to pick one over the other. You're probably getting more nutrition from the grown up version. Um, but if you like sprouts or microgreens better, then go for it. Go, yeah, then then yeah. it's totally fine. Okay, so where can people learn more about? what other vegetables might have different nutrients depending on like when they're grown or how they're grown? Like, is there a place where people can learn more information about this? There is there a place? <laughs> is there a place? There's a great place to learn about how nutrients vary based on your, on how they're grown. Uh, I actually have, um, I'm, I'm, I'm being silly now. So in chapter 10 in my new book, Nutrivore, chapter 10 is completely dedicated to busting myths, like the myth that microgreens are so much more nutrient dense than the grown up vegetables. And in there, I have some comparisons of the nutrients in organic versus conventionally grown fruits and vegetables, um, as well as examining the myth of, um, if people have heard of this, the myth that like, fruits and vegetables had so much more nutrients grow when they were grown in the fifties compared to being how they're grown now. I also look at um, how like grass fed meat uh, changes nutritionally versus conventional, how wild caught fish is different uh, compared to farmed um, and what nutrients are enhanced versus which ones are the same. So that is one of, um, I was gonna say not hundreds, dozens, dozens of, of such topics <laughs> in the book. It's not hundreds. That would be silly because it's only 400 pages. Um, but that is one of, of many topics in my very, very awesome book. Which you can find anywhere that you like to buy books or listen to books. Yeah. Yeah. Bookstores uh, as well as other stores that sell books. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Dr. Sarah. <laughs>